Hello everyone. First of all, I would like to give a shout out to Maynell Wackwitz, I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name, for becoming a member. Members get perks such as shout outs in the videos and also sometimes you get to see the thumbnail hours before the video premieres. And of course, there's going to be different levels as well. If you wanted to become a member, there's a link in the description in all my videos. So let's go ahead and get started. We have a cubic equation, x cubed minus x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. And its roots are x1, x2, and x3. And we're trying to find the sum of the seventh powers of the roots of this cubic equation. So how do we go about finding it? Obviously, there is something called Vieta's formulas. We talked about it before, remember? I made some videos on Vieta's formulas, both for lecture and some problem solving. And those formulas are actually very, very important. If you're dealing with polynomials, they're going to come up pretty much everywhere. And those are really powerful relationships. So basically, Vieta's formulas give you relationships between the roots of a polynomial and the coefficients of the equation. And the cool, coolest part of Vieta's formulas is that you find those relationships like sum of the roots, the product of the roots, so on and so forth, with, without finding the roots. So if you have a quintic equation, which you can't normally solve, you can still find the sum of the roots and other stuff. Now, in this case, we have a cubic equation, which is solvable, and you can try it. You're going to notice that this equation has some interesting solutions. But when you raise them to the seventh power, obviously they're going to become more interesting. Our goal is to find the sum without solving this equation. Okay? So, with the Vieta approach, you would need to manipulate something. And what would that look like? So, you're going to start with something like x1 plus x2 plus x3. Obviously, we can find this. And as you know, or you should know, in any equation, in any polynomial equation, this should always equal negative b over a. And b is, of course, the coefficient of x squared in this case, or the second highest power of x. So, once you find this, you want to find the sum of the seventh powers. How do you do that? Well, you can raise both sides to the seventh power, obviously, right? But do you seriously want to do this? Think about it. Like, you have a trinomial and you want to raise it to the seventh power. That's going to cause a lot of mess. I don't think you want to do that. That's not a cool approach. It's kind of like brute forcing. So let's go ahead and use a very cool approach. That's why polynomials are so awesome, because you can manipulate them in so many different ways. And in this channel, we're going to be doing a lot of problems on polynomials, because that's one of my favorite topics. I hope it's yours too, or it will become yours too. So what do I start with? Well, I start with what I'm given. So I, I'm given a cubic equation. Let's start with that. So I have x cubed minus x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. And x1, x2, x3 are solutions to this cubic equation. And what I'm trying to find is the sum of the seventh roots of these solutions without solving the equation. So how am I going to find that? Well, the first thing that I, I'd like to do is isolate x cubed. Why am I doing it? You'll see in a little bit, so be patient. I'd like to isolate. First, first of all, the reason why I isolate it is because x cubed is the most powerful term. Why? It has the highest degree. So my next step would be, I want to get something like 7th power. So why don't we just go ahead? Why don't we just go ahead? And this, is not the, this doesn't come out of the blue. I mean, this is something that we use all the time with polynomials. That's why I've been saying polynomials are awesome. We manipulate them. Okay, this is how we manipulate them. We go ahead and take both sides and square. Now, this should give you x to the 6th power on the left-hand side. And right-hand side is like a minus b quantity squared. I'm pretty sure you know that. x to the 4th minus 2x squared plus 1. Great. Now, this gave me x to the 6th power in terms of x to the 4th and x squared. Now, one thing to remember is x to the 4th is greater than x to the 3rd in terms of powers. So, what I can do is, since I have x cubed in terms of x squared or something like this, I can just go ahead and I would like to use this relationship again. How? In x to the fourth. But x to the fourth contains x cubed, so I can write it as x cubed times x minus 2x squared plus 1. Now, what I'd like to do at this point is replace this x cubed with this. Okay? So that I can get a nicer expression. 
well, that's not going to be super nice, but it'll get nicer. So replace x cubed with x squared minus 1. And of course, everything else stays the same. And then this gives you, if you distribute, you get x cubed minus x minus 2x squared plus 1. Let me go ahead and write in Stanford. I hope you don't mind. So we can kind of skip a quick step here. Well, this is going to give me x cubed minus 2 x squared, I guess you can write with the, you can't write with the eraser, huh? Minus x plus 1, you need a pen. So this is my x to the 6th power in terms of, you know, lower powers. But I know that x to the 3rd can be written like this. So why don't we just go ahead and substitute x cubed, uh, replace x cubed with x squared minus 1 again. Let's do that. And this is going to keep popping up. So that's what happens with polynomials sometimes. You just have to keep replacing. So x cubed replaced with x squared minus 1 and everything else stays the same. Now this is kind of cool because this is going to give me x to the 6th. Now we get x squared minus 2x squared which is negative x squared and obviously negative 1 and positive 1 cancels out and I end up with negative x squared minus x. Fairly simple, right? Now I started off with this x cubed equals x squared minus 1 then I ended up with this x to the 6th power. But my goal is to reach the 7th power. So how do you get to 7th power from x to the 6th? Again, manipulation, multiply both sides by x. And when you do that, you should be getting x to the 7th power. But you're also going to get into some trouble here because when you distribute, you're going to get negative x cubed minus x squared. But don't worry, we have something for x cubed. And that is our formula x cubed can be replaced with x squared minus 1. Let's go ahead and write that down here because we're going to keep using it. All right? x cubed equals x squared minus 1. So why don't we go ahead and replace x cubed with x squared minus 1. But be careful because there's a negative sign here. So you kind of have to manipulate it that way. And this gives you negative 2x squared plus 1. Great. Now, this is really nice because I was able to express x to the seventh power in terms of a much lower power, which is x to the second. Now, here's what I'm going to do. What is this x business, right? Well, x is my, in my original equation, I had a cubic equation, right, which was written as x cubed minus x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. And the solutions are x1, x2, x3. So each of these, basically, x represent each one of these. So what it means is that if x satisfies that equation, it also satisfies this equation because this equation is a result of the original cubic. I'm not saying they have the same solutions because obviously this has extra solutions. But here's what I'm trying to say. Since this equation is going to satisfy the original, that means I can replace x with x1. Let's see what happens when I do. Let's just try it for x1. And this is going to be fun. So x1 to the 7th power can be written like this. If I replace x with x1, but of course, whatever I can do with x1, I can do it with x2 and x3. They're equal, right? I mean, treated equally, basically, not just equal, like equal. And then x3 to the 7th can also be written that way. But of course, they're all written in terms of x squared. Now, my goal, remember, our goal was to get x1 to the 7th plus x2 to the 7th plus x3 to the 7th for this equation. So what I'd like to do next is not hard to guess. I'm going to be adding these three equations. And when I add that, something interesting is going to happen. Because you're going to be getting from a sum of 7 powers, you're going to get a sum of second powers, which is obviously much nicer. Of course, there's a common factor. Let's go ahead and take it out. And I should be getting x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared. And then, of course, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is going to become 3. Now, I've come to the point where I just need to evaluate the sum of the squares of the solutions. And I can do that. Now, what was my original equation? Well, my original equation was x cubed minus x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. And x1, x2, x3 are solutions. I'm just, I keep saying this so that I can, you know, rem remind it. Uh, what am I going to do? Well, I do need to evaluate this. But it can be done. Look, this equation, for this equation, I can write the sum of the roots, which is negative b over a, and that gives me 1. But I do need the sum of the squares. So why don't we just go ahead and square both sides, right? When you square 
x1 plus x2 plus x3. I hope you know this formula. It is x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared with some additional terms such as 2 times the quantity x1 x2 plus x1 x3 plus x2 x3. And obviously since I square one the answer should be 1 as well. Okay now remember I'm trying to find I'm trying to find this. So I do need to find this. How do I find this? Well, again, Vieta's formulas give us th that. So x1, x2, x1, x3 plus x2, x3. In a cubic equation, it is always equal to c over a. c is the coefficient of x. But if you go back to our cubic, you're going to notice that there is no x in it, which means the coefficient of x is 0. Therefore, this is equal to 0. Awesome, because then this whole thing is equal to zero, which means I can totally forget about it. And this gives me x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared is equal to one, because this expression here plus zero equals one, so that means the sum of the squares equals one. But I, I'm not gonna, I don't need the sum of squares. Well, I do and I don't. Here's what I need to do. I need to substitute that here because I know that x1 to the 7th power plus x2 to the 7th power plus x3 to the 7th power is equal to negative 2 times, right? Negative 2 times that, which is x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared, right? And then plus 3 because remember 1 plus 1 plus 1. So this is what I need to find. So I know that the sum of the squares is 1, so I can just go ahead and replace this with 1, and then I should be getting my answer. So x1 to the 7th power plus x2 to the 7th power plus x3 to the 7th power is equal to negative 2 times 1 plus 3, and from here, x1 to the 7th power plus x2 to the 7th power plus x3 to the 7th power for my cubic is going to equal 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. But don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Until tomorrow, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.